Howdy. Howdy. Oh, let's try that again. Howdy. Howdy. There we go. All right. Well, well, well. I am so happy to be here with you guys tonight, and, and I hope you're excited about the time we're going to spend here together talking about a subject that as of late has become um, a little more popular, as you might imagine. So let me, uh, let me begin by asking a question that I've been asking all over Texas. You guys okay with that? Yes. Who here is ready for Texit? Yeah. Oh, hang on. <laughs> it's not a show of hands. <laughs> let me ask again. Who here is ready for Texit? That's what I expect Texans to sound like. Just a little touch rowdy, right? Uh, when, I, when I heard Stephen talking about his informal group of the rabble rousers, I was like, okay, I'm at home. Then I saw the slideshow that, that came up earlier, circling around that uh, was actually dragging some of our uh, elected officials like Dade Phelan, our Speaker of the House, for not being Texan enough, I thought, yeah, I'm definitely at home. Well, tonight, folks, we're gonna talk about a subject that I have personally been involved in trying to make happen since August 24th, 1996. And, you know, for, for some people out there, I'm not gonna say any, it's any of you in this room, but for some people out there, maybe like the CNNs of the world or the MSNBCs of the world, oh, I'm sorry, I meant MSDNCs of the world, some of the establishment politicians, it may seem a little out there. But I'm going to teach you something tonight about Texit. As much as they try to make it super complicated, it really boils down to some really simple things. So tonight I'm going to start with this. I saw, I noticed that you guys were fans of our governing documents. We saw the Declaration of Independence up there, right? We had that reading, and boy, it spoke, did it not? Those words motivated a small but growing number of British subjects to raise their heads and say no more. But you see, here in Texas, we have our own governing document. Our own governing document inspired by our original governing document, the Republic of Texas Constitution of 1836, and the Texas Declaration of Independence from 1836, written by the sons and grandsons of those people that rose up against a king and shattered an empire. Written by folks that were not going to say yes to a tyrant. When a tyrant said, we're coming for your little bitty cannon, our people hoisted a flag and said, we're not going to fold like Superman on laundry day. Come and take it. Am I right? Yep. Okay. What's interesting about Texas is that our current state constitution, as difficult and unwieldy as it may be because we happen to go amend the thing every two years, there's something that is held fast and true about our state constitution, a thread that runs all the way back to the Republic of Texas Constitution of 1836. And that thread is that thread that fueled and fired that spirit that won our independence at San Jacinto. You see, if you crack open the Con Texas Constitution of 1876, you crack that thing open, Article One, the Texas Bill of Rights. Not appended to the back, but jammed right in the front so that everyone in Texas should know their rights and government should never forget them. And the first words of our Texas Constitution are this. Texas is a free and independent state. How does that make you feel? Awesome. Texas is a free 
an independent state. Now, I can tell you, nowadays it doesn't feel much like it, does it? Spoilers. We're going to get there. But those are the words. Texas is a free and independent state. But you know, what's interesting about Article 1, Section 1 of the Texas Constitution is that it ends with these words. It says that the perpetuity of the Union, a.k.a. our continued participation therein, depends on the right of local self-government unimpaired to all the states. Now you heard Stephen read that I'm originally from Northeast Texas. I'm from a little town called White Oak. I don't know if you guys, anybody here, know White Oak people here? It's very tiny. Our, our, our school mascot was the Roughnecks, right? We like things broken down into the plain and the simple, right? Perpetuity of the union depends on the right of local self-government unimpaired to all the states. Let me break it down to you, Northeast Texas White Oak style. What that means is that at the moment that our right of self-government, a.k.a. a government that begins in Texas and ends at the borders, is impaired, deferred, dodged, trampled on, denied, that means that our participation in this federal union is at an end. Now, don't you think about that for a moment. Wouldn't you say that many of us are in here tonight because our right of local self-government has been impaired? I mean, let's, let's, let's just get down to brass tacks, folks. How many, fan, how many fans do we have of the federal government's treatment of Texas? I would venture none in this room. Our right of local self-government has been impaired, and it's not a new phenomenon. It did not happen when President Potato Head stuck his hand in the air shortly before he fell upstairs three times. That was weird. Magical, but weird. That, it didn't just start now, did it? Let's not forget our governor, current governor, when he was attorney general, one of the things that he ran on to become governor was, I sued the Obama administration more than any attorney general in history. I sued the federal government more than any attorney general in history. Now, he didn't tell you about his batting average on that one, right? But that's his claim to fame. So do you know what that means? In each of those instances, the federal government trampled on our right of local self-government. Texans decided one thing. Somebody wah wad to a federal court and some black-robed tyrant said, you know what, Texas? You don't know what you're doing. You have no idea, so we're going to choose for you. Every single instance. And let's don't think that it just all deals with the lawsuits, right? It's been going on for a long time, has it not? Do we need to talk about the Tea Party insurgency in 2009 that rose up over the fact that they were taking money out of our pockets and using it to bail out banks and big corporations and slinging us change or nothing? Or let's not talk, let, I mean, let's talk about the Internal Revenue Service and their political persecution of Tea Party and conservative organizations. A fact that happened with ultimately no repercussions for those people that were involved in it, even after a change in the White House. Folks, our right of local self-government has been impaired, has it not? Well, I got some good news for you. Again, you may have had a little spoiler alert with that Declaration of Independence up there. But I'm going to tell you what our Texas Constitution 
right now says. You know, that Constitution that every elected official in Texas puts their hand on the Bible and jams their right hand in the air and swears an oath to uphold. You know that one, right? They have it right. Well, I got a funny story about that, and maybe I'll tell it if you want me to. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Keyword, don't let me forget, because I don't normally tell this story. Just remind me about David Dewhurst. Gotcha. Guys, y'all are going to get a treat tonight. I don't ever tell this story. So Article 1, Section 1, we covered. Article 1, Section 2 is the good news. Here's what it says. All political power is inherent in the people. And all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their benefit. And it goes on to say that the people have at all times the inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their form of government in such manner as they may think expedient. Praise God for the wisdom of the founders and the framers, right? <laughs> All political power is inherent in the people, is what it says. Notice it doesn't say all political power is inherent in the politicians, or the pollsters, or the pundits, or the propagandists masquerading as mainstream media. All political power is inherent in who? Folks, that didn't sound very powerful to me. <laughs> wow. Okay. Let's, so let me ask that question again. All political power is inherent in who? The people. The people. And who are we? The people. We're the people. So guess what? If Article 1, Section 1 says that Texas is a free and independent state and we are not being treated like a free and independent state, and on the, on the, to make it even worse, our rights are being trampled on, then who has the power to do something about it? We do. We do. And doggone, we're going to do it. It's happening right now. Your story. You sure you want me to do this? This is rare. But I'm going to tell you, this story is going to highlight what the problem is. And you're going to see it, and you're going to understand beyond a shadow of a doubt why a lot of our elected officials are asleep at the wheel. It was several sessions back when David Dewhurst was still lieutenant governor. You guys remember David Dewhurst? Yes. Did you guys know he got arrested recently? Yes. Man, that was wild. That's a whole other story that I'd like to hear. First day of the legislative session. Our organization, the Texas Nationalist Movement, rallies at the Capitol. We rally at the Capitol, stand in the rain, gather up, and then head into the Capitol to deliver copies of a proposed piece of legislation that would give Texans a vote on whether or not to stay or to leave the Union. We hit every doggone office in there. We were like a swarm of pro-Texit locusts. It was gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> And you could see, they could see us coming. And then all of a sudden, the phone rings. And it was David Dewhurst's office. They said, the lieutenant governor would like to visit with you. Oh, really? Okay, that's a new one. So here I go, marching up to the lieutenant governor's office. I sit down in David Dewhurst's office, sit across the table from him. And I told him exactly what I just told y'all, almost verbatim. I quoted Article 1, Section 1, and Article 1, Section 2. And this look washed over his face of utter amazement. And then he got up from the table, because in his office there's a desk, and then he had a little work table right there. He gets up, he walks behind his desk, he pulls a book out, he comes back, and he sets it on the table, and I look at the cover and it says, Texas Constitution. 
And he starts thumbing. He says, okay, say that again. And so I said it again, and here he is moving with his finger in the book. And it dawned on me. He had just walked off of the floor of the Texas legislature, administering the oath to new senators, and had no idea what Article 1, Section 1 and Article 1, Section 2 even said. To prove my point, he had five other state senators who were waiting in the outside office to meet with him. He goes up to the door, he says, hey, come in, come in, you guys have got to hear this. And he sits them down and he says, guys, have you seen this? And he reads it out of the book to them. And of course, they're looking at each other like, what did we just walk into? You know, is he about to hold us hostage? I mean, that was the kind of look. It was like, you know, maybe they're one picture away from having to hold up a picture of today's newspaper to prove that they're still alive, kind of hostage photo look, you know? And he read it off to them, and they just kind of looked at each other, stunned. Especially after I explained what we wanted next, which was a vote on the issue. But if you want to understand why there is such a disconnect, our, governing, uh, our, our officials in Austin, in government, and I would suggest probably even on down from the state house to the schoolhouse, swear an oath to a document that they have never read. Am I right? So there's my story. I never tell that. So good. So Article 1, Section 2, if all political power is inherent in the people, and it's in our Constitution, notice it said that it is an inalienable right, right? Just like the right to keep and bear arms, you guys would agree, right? This is a this come and take it crowd, right? How about, how about your freedom to worship, right? Inalienable. Freedom of speech, inalienable, right? Not, we're not part of that group in power in Washington, D.C. that believes that amendments are not absolute, right? These are rights. They're inalienable. So I want you to think about this idea of Texit in those terms. It is our inalienable right to make that choice. Now, whether you're on the Texit train or willing to get left at the station, the fact of the matter is, as a people, it is our right to decide. And so to that end, for so many years, I have worked to make this happen because I know that Texas will benefit all Texans. Every single corner of Texas, from Dalhart to Del Rio, from El Paso to Orange, I know that Texas is best for Texas, but it's not up to me to decide. Because my fight has not just been to make Texas happen, but to give you the opportunity to have your voice heard on it. Now, to that end, the next step for us, obviously, is getting legislation that will give us that vote. Much like you saw Scotland go to the polls in 2014 to vote on their independence, much like you saw the UK go to the polls and vote on whether or not they should Brexit, the people of Texas need to be heard on this issue. Right? Whether you agree with it or not, at a bare minimum, the people of Texas have a right to be heard. Right? Yes. Well, thank God for State Representative Kyle Biederman. Because out of all of these sessions, all of these legislative sessions where we work this issue, State Representative Kyle Biederman from Fredericksburg, Texas, the man whose other job other than being a legislature, legislator is owning an Ace Hardware store, but a man who is possessed of tremendous courage because he agreed to file the legislation and filed it in this session. And so I'm going to ask you to do something. Don't, you don't have to do it right now, but at some point, find Kyle on social media 
or call his office or drop him an email and thank him for having faith in you. Because I don't know that Kyle is sold on Texit, but I know what Kyle is sold on, and that is letting you have a vote on it. Because all the issues about the pros and cons of Texit are going to come out in advance of a vote. Just like they always do on every vote, right? Sides campaign, the pros and the cons, we all discuss it, but at the end of the day, we all get to have our say as we go into the ballot box and we cast our vote. Well, glory be, Kyle had some allies. State Representative James White, you guys know him, signed on not just as a co-author, but he signed on as a joint author. That's like the equivalent of going and signing your name next to John Hancock's signature on this kind of thing. James, and when you ask him why, he says, because it's what my constituents told me they want. My constituents told me they want to vote on this, I'm gonna support it. Then you had some other heroes. How about Brian Slayton and Jeff Kaysen? I mean, come on for those guys. Great men of courage who, who stood up and fought for this legislation. Fought for it, Steve Toth from down in the woodlands. I mean, there were, Kyle had some allies. And so when the legislative session started, we piled hundreds of thousands of phone calls into that building. Shut down the switchboards on more than one occasion, and the bill got hung up in the State Affairs Committee with State Representative Chris Patty, who became the sole arbiter of your political destiny, who held it in committee until the bill died. But you see, at the beginning of the legislative session, we made these guys a promise. We said either we're going to get a vote on Texas in 2021, or we're going to have a referendum on you in 2022. And I got a feeling that there's some people in here ready to have some referenda on some politicians. Am I wrong about that? Amen. No, we're going to get this done. Because the message to these people has been simple. After this major outpouring of constituent support, if you do not represent us, you cannot represent us. Amen. They got to go. Yeah. They got to go. Yeah. But I'm going to tell you what the logic is, okay? Because they, there's been pushback from the political establishment, right? The most vicious people have not been the Democrats. There's actually been some of the Democrats that have been open to supporting at least the vote on it. Can you believe that? It's weird. This thing cuts odd. But what's been more interesting has been how vicious the, these alleged Republican legislators have been toward their constituents. And vicious, that's a light word. One of your guys from up here, Jeff Leach. Not our guy. I'm just saying, he's in your neck of the woods. You, you're a lot closer to smelling him than I am. He takes to Twitter before Kyle had even filed the legislation, and he essentially detailed the opposition argument to House Bill 1359. Here's what he said. No one supports this. That was number one. So just so I make sure that I'm not imagining something, somebody didn't slip something in my water earlier, who here is ready for Texit? Okay. So Jeff Leach is a liar. Hang on, where's the camera? Jeff Leach, you're a liar. That's you. No one supports it. That was proven garbage, right? Not just by this room, but the hundreds of thousands of calls, the standing room only events that we've been doing. People want this. They understand what's at stake. But this is what he said. No one supports it, and because no one supports it, you should not be able to have a vote on it. It's a waste of time. Well, it's like, wait a minute. I thought we were all about putting things on the ballot, right? Primary ballot all the time propositions, right? The ballot in November with these constitutional amendments, 
There's going to be, there's going to be things on that ballot. It's going to happen. Am I running out of time or something? You guys are killing me over here. Okay. Y'all making goo-goo eyes. I, was, I didn't know what was going on. <laughs> okay. Well, look, if you want me to drag him some more, I can tell you more. Okay. I have no qualms. Okay. Look, I mean, but, but look, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to tell you Jeff Leach as the poster boy for the political establishment. I mean, that guy carries so much water for those guys, he's probably got a hunchback. Right? But let me tell you what their primary opposition is. There's zero cost to putting this on a ballot. Let's start with that, okay? So it's not going to cost anything. Doesn't take up any time. If it goes on the ballot and gets shot down in flames, guess what? They're proven right. But here's why they're scared. Because they know beyond a shadow of a doubt that if the people of Texas are given a vote on Texas, they know that Texas is going to win. Why else would they be scared to put it on a ballot, right? Why else? Now, I can tell you, we know this to be a fact. We go to the polls on this thing, we're not going to beat them by a percentage point or two percentage points. Nobody's going to have to count hanging chads. You know, I don't care how many graves they go register voters at. We're going to blow them out of the water. And I'm going to explain to you how I know this. It's not just the polling numbers, right? Even far, as far back as 2014, Reuters Ipsos poll, right around the time of the Scottish Independence referendum. Now think about 2014. Second Obama, ter second Obama term, I think two years in, right? Here's what the poll numbers were. 54% of Republicans, about half of independents, and 35% of Democrats said that Texas should leave the Union and become its own country. Well, you know what? Any politician would kill to have that number of people, right? I mean, that slice of life right there, you get those people to the polls, but those aren't the people that vote for establishment politicians, are they? I mean, who knew that there was a plank added to the Republican Party platform in this last convention dealing specifically with this issue? Look at this. I feel like I just made a touchdown. That was both arms. It was amazing. And thank you to all of you guys who pulled out the stops to get that done. Because it took an effort. But I could give you poll numbers till the cows come home. But here's how I know we're going to win. You want to know the secret? Well, one person wants to know the secret here. Let's go back over here. We'll have that conversation. Then you rest of y'all will feel left out, won't you? When you see is Here's what it boils down to. No matter where we've gone, for many, many years, we were always put on the defensive about Texas. We were forced to answer every little bit of minutia. And God knows we've got the answers to the questions. If you guys want to do a Q&A at some point, I'm sure maybe we can do that. But the social security question, the military question, the, we, were, we, were put, we were forced to answer every single question down to the most minute detail. Well, what will Texas look like 20 years after we leave? Well, I don't know, I'll probably be dead. You know, this is not exactly the healthiest lifestyle, right? So a few years ago, we decided we're gonna flip the script on these people. Because it was just opposition most of the time, just egging us on, right? So we decided we're going to flip the script. So let me ask you this question. We're going to do a little thought experiment. Are you all right with that? Yes. Okay. So for a moment, I want you to imagine that Texas was currently a free, independent, self-governing nation state, a nation among nations, a self-governing nation in every respect. We had control over our own immigration and border policy. We had control over our own currency and spending, right? We had our own military, and we actually took care of our veterans when they came home from service. 
We had our own post office. Nobody's going to clap for that. <laughs> and the one that always gets me booed is, you know, we even have our own Olympic team. <laughs> Nobody really cares, do they? Right? I mean, it is pretty awesome that if Texas, if you took the Texas athletes out and looked at them by gold medals, we'd be one of the top gold medal winners in the world. But, you know, everything's better in Texas, right? Including our ribbon dancers, apparently, whatever, whatever, sport, whatever sports they have there, right? But imagine that for a moment, right? Texas currently is a free, independent, self-governing nation state. And instead of this being a question of Texas, the voters of Texas were being asked to join the union. And you pulled up to the, to the ballot box and you looked at your slip of paper and you were faced with the question, should the independent, self-governing Republic of Texas join the union? How would you vote? No. Now don't, wait a minute, was that, was that really a no? no. Okay, no. well, <laughs> sir, you're in a church. Please settle down. <laughs> Bible talks about hell. It does. It does. It's called Washington, D.C. I've driven through there once or twice. But imagine that for a moment. Now, I don't want you to have a knee-jerk reaction. I, 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 I want to think this through. Can I, can I play, speaking of Washington, D.C. being hell, can I play the devil's advocate for a moment before you make your decision? Because I, I, I want to help you. I want you to, make, I want you to make an informed decision, right? We're not about knee-jerk reactions. We're, we're smart people, right? We're thoughtful, contrary to what the establishment politicians think about us, right? We like to make well-reasoned, thoughtful choices. So I'm going to help you. So let me sell to you Texas joining the union. Day one, we join. We immediately get 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations. I mean, who needs to think about anything when they've got every bit of your life scripted out, right? Now, hey, good news. If you print it out and stack it up, the stack will be taller than the San Jacinto Monument. So you kind of get two monuments now, right? I mean, think about that for a moment. 180,000 pages of federal laws, rules, and regulations. Now, if that seems intimidating, let me tell you that Texas would get two and a half million unelected bureaucrats to help you navigate all that. That's really what you want, right? Two and a half million people on your side? Well, not really on your side, but making sure you follow those rules and regulations. Now look, if that doesn't sell it for you, let's not forget that day one, you're going to get crushed under about $30 trillion worth of debt, but don't worry about it because the federal government's got a system worked out for that. They just kick that can down the road so that your children and their 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 children and you get the picture will be on the hook for it. Right? So you get, to, you get to shirk some responsibility just by kicking a can down the road now. I mean, who doesn't like debt, right? Okay, well, if that doesn't do it for you, hmm. Well, let's try this one out. As Texans, you'll get to still make your own decisions, right? You'll get to have your own elected officials. They'll get to go down to Austin. They'll get to make decisions and write laws and pass them caveat, about half of those bills that they write will be written by some federal bureaucrat. They'll be written because of some federal law, some federal rule or regulation, some federal court case, you know, but at least half their work is done, right? Well, not going to do it for you, huh? Well. Here's a final one for you because I don't want to beat a dead horse. I mean, who beats dead horses? That, I mean, you ever think about that catchphrase? That's weird. But here's your final one. When as Texans you make a decision for yourself about how you want to live, 
about how you want to be governed. And you'll debate and you'll discuss. You, it may even get superheated. But when it's all over with, you make the decision, you shake hands, and you say, that's the way it's done. But, you know, sometimes people make wrong decisions, right? And there will be this regiment of black-robed, unelected, unaccountable federal judges that will be there to remind you that they think that Texans are too stupid and ignorant to govern themselves. So knowing what you know, I'm going to ask you the question again. Would you vote to join the union? Heck no. Heck no. That's how I know we're going to win. Because I just stated in a nutshell the case for the opposition. Because if you would not vote to join, why would anyone vote to stay? Why would they? Well, folks, that's the response that we're getting all around the state. From one end to the other, Texas is winning. The people of Texas aren't going to take it anymore. They're not going to be called Neanderthals out of the Oval Office and take it. They're not going to be treated like they're too stupid and ignorant to govern themselves by the federal government or these politicians in Austin who denied us the right to vote on this issue. We're not going to take it anymore. And when I promised them at the beginning of the session that we, we, we would get a Texas referendum in 2021 or have a referendum on them in 2022, they're about to find out what that looks like. Now here's the bottom line, folks, because I'm going to wrap this thing up. Here's what we all need to understand. If we do not act right now, then Texas as we know it is done. It's done. Future generations will not know Texas as we have known Texas. They will know us as the people who hoisted a flag that said, come and take it, and then walked away and let them take it. And frankly, folks, I think this battle is a bit larger than that. This is not for the soul of the Washington District of Criminals or the federal system. This is a much larger battle of ideologies. Those who revere freedom and liberty versus those who believe in central control and unlimited power and authority. Those who believe that social engineering Texans and getting that independent spirit out of them is their number one job. This is a battle to determine what the next 100 to 200 years look like in North America and probably the world. The light of freedom and liberty burns here. It shines and can shine not just for other states of the Union but for other nations around the world who are chafing at the yoke of central control and tyranny and people that are bent on unlimited authority. We have an opportunity. Governor Abbott says all the time when he's asked about this, he says, I believe that we should lead and not leave. And I'm telling you right now, the only way to lead is to leave. For, we must set the example for the rest of the states. The eyes of the world are upon us. Are Texans going to continue to follow a Pied Piper that says, well, we're just one election away from fixing Washington, D.C.? Or are we going to reclaim what was fundamentally ours, that was given to us as a legacy in the blood spilled at the Alamo and Goliad and the firing of the victory shots and the cannons at San Jacinto? Are we the inheritors of that legacy? Well, folks, we're about to find out. So I'm going to encourage you, if you have questions, I, I don't know how this is going to flow the rest of the evening, but if you have questions about all of those hundred different things, we have a website at texitnow.org. Go there, get your questions answered. 
But it's not just about getting your questions answered. Knowledge is great, but knowledge is not action, is it? The twelfth day of the Alamo siege, Colonel Travis took all the people into the, into the, uh, the courtyard and explained to them the situation, much like I did for you guys tonight. And he said, I am going to go and I'm going to do my duty. I am going to stay. If you want to sneak out at night, that's your prerogative. But those who want to stay cross this line in the sand. And he drew his sword and he drew a line and he encouraged everyone to come across that line. Because no matter if he did it alone, he was going to stay. Well, folks, this is your line in the sand moment. Much like mine on August 24th, 1996, I crossed that line and I'm not going to look back. When Travis signed his letter, Victory or Death, he meant it. On August 24th, 1996, when I crossed that line in the sand, I mean it too. It's going to be when Texit or the grave diggers pat me in the face with a shovel. Because this is where history gets made. We make the choice. We write the history or we let it be written for us. But the choice is ours to make. So I encourage you to join with us. Join our organization, join our movement, join our cause. Speak up, stand up, and step up. Because we know that this is going to end in our victory. And here's how I know. And I'll leave you with this. After Texas joined the Union, Sam Houston, knowing that some of his countrymen in Texas were kind of down in the mouth about no longer being an independent nation, he said these words. He said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations. He predicted it. He knew that Texans, when called upon, would rise to the occasion. And when we rose to that occasion, it would mean that we were a self-governing, independent Nation among nations again. Olympic team and all. <laughs> so this, if Sam Houston said that Texas will again lift its head and stand among the nations, I will tell you, I believe that time is now. And the question is, will you stand with her? I want to thank you all for your indulgence tonight. You've been wonderful, and I appreciate you all.